With the trade deadline looming, we have five possible trades that the Toronto Raptors could make leading into this trade deadline. Yeah, possible, realistic. Last one we got a little slammed for being a little <laughs> creative. This one, we kept ourselves in check. These are legitimate kind trade of, possibilities. Kind of. uh, I would say that these could all happen. These are all within the realm of possibility. They're in the realm of possibility. We don't necessarily think the Raptors need to make a trade, but these are five possible trades that could happen with yep. the deadline limit. There's no rumors or anything behind it, but we think if the Raptors were to make a trade, these are some of the deals that could happen. Yep. So we're starting off. Trade one. The Toronto Raptors. The return of six men like Lou Will and Montrez Harrell for CJ Miles and DeLon Wright. This might be a controversial trade here. And DeLon Wright. Yeah, I don't like it because I'm on the CJ Miles train. Um, yeah. To There's been a lot of hate for CJ Miles in the past couple weeks, especially where his three pointer has been off. But um, well, Lou Williams, he's mm -hmm. okay. No, talk about Lou Williams first. Sure. Yeah, Lou almost was an all star this season, and he's been very, very, just a huge. He was great for us a couple years back, and he was always a spark off the bench. But this year, he's taking it to a whole nother level. He's almost an all star. Single handedly took down the Warriors. Yeah, 50 he's point game. Yeah, just been absolute beast. He's upped his game this season. And Montrez Harrell, the Raptors Trash. have been struggling. He's been str the Raptors have been struggling with defensive rebounding, and he he could help that for for the Raptors. He provides no other value to the team. I'm just gonna pop in though because like my issue with Lou Williams is we've had him on the team before, right? Yep. I mean, okay, he got six man of the year, but I mean we clearly had our issues with him being a streaky shooter. It's the same thing with CJ. But Miles, I think except we're I swapping think... down in terms of height. He would be an absolute liability to come playoff time. Doesn't matter if you can put points on the board. He just he's so small. He's an undersized shooting guard, and we can't play okay. him at point. Okay. No. So we have Fred for point. I think Lou Williams. I think you agree is a better shot creator than CJ Andalon. Like a better just all around okay, scorer. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. He's, he's and a I scoring machine. Yeah, and I think the when we had Lou the last time, the biggest issue was that he was always sharing time with Gravis Vasquez, and. Gravis and Lou aren't the greatest defenders, as we all remember. We got destroyed in a Washington series. But I think if you pair Lou in the bench unit with a guy like Fred, who's just an absolute monster on defense, despite his stature, he's always into people, he's always at people, and you know Norm will get more minutes out of this, I think Lou will be a better fit on this roster, mm. especially with his improved play. I, I think it's kind of waste, though, to get rid of... CJ and Alon, two of our good prospects for Montreal Harrell, who is not. I mean, ha, don't even. Montreal Harrell's good. Him. Don't be hating on Montreal Harrell. I hate on him because the only good that I see him of him is when he plays in the D League, uh, not the D League, <laughs> the Drew League, the Drew League, the G, G uh, Drew League. Okay. No, the Drew League, the summer. Okay, league. I like it. That. All right, uh, let us know what you think. Let, let, let us yeah. know if you want to see the return of Lou Williams, of, six uh, man like Lou will, sexy Lou. Two uh, girls and they you... get along. That's it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, trade two. This one's a little bit lower key. Yeah. And I think these are the more realistic ones because we have been playing very well this season, so it's easier yeah. to trade people who aren't in the rotation. But yeah. it goes Bruno Caboclo and Bebe Nogueira to the Utah Jazz for Jonas Drebko. <clears throat> now, people Doesn't... might be confused. Why would we want Jonas Drebko? kind of a weird trade here but I think the Raptors they need more three point shooting and they get some rebounding and those are the two things Jonas Jarebko can do yeah and we'd be and trading Br away two people who get waste minutes as well the only thing is yeah. would, would the Utah Jazz have any need for either of those players do you think uh, they're two young guys with potential we are, we're loaded on the wings with potential you know OG's there we still got CJ. We got Norm. All those guys are fighting for minutes. I don't see Bruno Caboclo, even if he becomes an NBA player, I don't see him getting minutes on the Raptors in the future. And Bebe, same thing with Bebe. We have Jonas and we have Jacopoto. Yeah. And does what? Okay, does Yurepko get burner minutes on the Jazz, though, or does he actually play? I He's, like, at the end of the rotation. 
So essentially, it, it's like if the Jazz are willing to take on a pet project. Yes. For in the case of Bruno, and I think yeah, Drive Club does not get that many good. minutes. Bebe's pretty. Bebe's pretty good. Yes, I agree. But I think Jurebko's strong like strengths is more of what we need than Bebe and Bruno. And if we need minutes from our deep bench, I think Jurebko has a specific skill that will improve the team more. At the same time, though, Jurebko is getting sixteen point eight minutes per game, so it's questionable. If it happened, it would be nice. I think I think yeah. we're getting rid of pretty well nothing to get a pretty as you you stated it pretty eloquently in terms of <laughs> the value that we'd be getting. Yeah. Plus. Like you said, and like I said before we started the pod, the issue is we, we, we need to get a player that comes into the bench unit or into a rotation, um, a role playing piece, uh, or that's comfortable with being a role player. Because if we get yeah. a high octane player from the trade, then I don't think that it'll really help us immediately in this playoffs. Because then we'll have to, you know, mess with bring in chemistry adjust and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So we need a player yeah. that already knows how to play a role, and we just fit them in more efficiently than what we already have. But that's okay, an interesting fair. trade. All right. Moving on to the next one. So to juxtapose the point you just made, let's get a little bit crazy again. <laughs> uh, so the Toronto Raptors get Marc Gasol and Tyreek Evans, who Tyreek Evans is definitely on the trade block. Yeah. The Grizzlies have been awful this season, and the Memphis Grizzlies get Jonas, Bebe, DeLon, and Alfonso McKinney. Yeah. Now, okay, I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy at all, man. We have this video you at propose, the beginning of the I year. Th- yeah, we said at the beginning of the pod we're going to be rational. I think this one, the Grizzlies love Marcus All. They love Marcus All, but Marcus All doesn't love the Grizzlies. No, he does. He he wants to be there. He said he's not going to demand a trade. Okay, I don't okay, know. And, I think Ty- Marcus All's been chopped, low key. Maybe okay, the Hot. Grizzlies have been really bad, so it's possible. This is this is all dependent on the Grizzlies organization. And what they want to do going forward. But if they do put these two guys... And Tyreek Evans is blatantly on the market. So... And they want young players or picks. We don't necessarily have picks. But DeLon Wright is equivalent to a young first round pick in our eyes. Yeah. Let us know if you guys agree out there, the fans. And Jonas has been very, very good as of late. And I yeah, think the Grizzlies Dwayne might Casey see him as Dwayne a young... Casey hates him. It, so it's been I better this season. Definitely it's been better this season. Last couple of games spoken otherwise. Okay, but let's just talk let's about see. in your in your opinion, would Gasol and Tyreek Evans be good right now for immediate immediate success? Oh, one hundred. You think that they fit for in immediate well? success? Yes. Because I guess the the issue is like we compare um, Marc Gasol to JV, and I don't think there's really a comparison. He has, you know, he's. I don't really know that athleticism, but he's a better rebounder and he's a better shot creator as well, right? Yeah, and positional defense. That's where Jonas has improved. And we made a video at the beginning of the year, you know, almost trying to give away Jonas from Marcus Holt. Jonas has been a lot better, but Tyreek Evans, man, that guy has been ridiculous this season. And he's on maybe a cheap deal. Maybe there's a way to swing a deal with no Marcus Holt and just get Tyreek Evans over to the Raptors. That'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting move as well. Yeah. Yeah. Tyreek Evans. He'd, he'd be a really fun piece to have, actually. Yeah, especially with his contract. But as as the Grizzlies have reported and saying, they want a first round pick or a very young, talented player for but Tyreek you, Evans. You made the argument with DeLon, though. DeLon has a really high ceiling. Not of the last couple of games, but overall, yeah. he's been having mm-hmm. a good season. He has a really high ceiling. So, yeah. Be interesting to see. All right, next trip. Very interesting. Yeah. So we'll see if that happens. We have another smaller deal back for the next one. Yep. Bruno and Bebe again. The Brooklyn Nets always looking for young players. And the Toronto Raptors get Nick Stauskas and Quincy Acey. Yeah, love it. Quack, as I used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. Oh, he was good. And then we get yeah. Stauskas, a good Canadian boy. Right? We yeah. bring it back home, Toronto. Yes. Yeah. So this is another deal. The Brooklyn Nets looking for young guys. I think that this deal could be possible. We need shooting. Raptors offense right now is runs through all these threes. So Stauskas could be valuable in our system. And Quincy AC. I heard Leo say on a couple games back, the, the defensive rebounding has been a problem for Toronto this season. Yep. And he threw out the name Reggie Evans. We need a Reggie Evans guy back. Yep. 
Quincy AC is Reggie Evans Jr. <laughs> they look the same. Yeah, you got the beard, the bald head. Both yeah. used to play for the Raptors. That's it. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind this deal going down. He's Quince is a bulldog. Stauskas shoots threes. Neither of the guys it. we get too too many minutes. Stauskas has been just begging to find a permanent place in this yeah, league. For sure. And I feel like he has some sort. Of, him and Doug McDermott are essentially the same player in my eyes. Stauskas. Mm-hmm. A little bit less skilled, but I mean, they both have a similar game plan. They're just looking yeah. to actually crack a rotation. Yeah, um, for sure. That's but fair. it would be good. It would be nice to have another shooter on the team. Yeah. All right. This is the best trade coming up here. This uh, this one of wild. dreams. It's wild, yeah. but it's within. We can justify it. Yep. Yeah. This one, the Toronto Raptors receive Marisa Toledovic, Jabari Parker, yeah. and Tyler Johnson. The Milwaukee Bucks receive. Hassan Whiteside, Bruno Caboclo, and Pascal Siakam. And the Miami Heat receive Serge Ibaka, Tony Snell, and Thon Maker. Right, good. This, is, this should have been in the blockbuster deal video. Yeah. that It should have. And the, but this yeah. one's crazy. This one took a while to formulate. But it makes... Okay, you explain it better than I do. But why would this make sense for the other... Not for the Raptors, for the other two teams. Well, for the other two teams, we'll get into... We'll break down the Raptors side of things at after but uh i think the bucks would accept it they've been after hassan whiteside very heavily and they're debating trading jabari parker right now and i believe they'll come to the conclusion that jabari parker is probably worth hassan whiteside yep and they're they in this deal they also give up thom maker but pascal siakam in my opinion is just a shorter thom maker that's true a shorter have- less less proven thon maker but of equal... Well, Thawmaker isn't that proven. He hasn't done, besides the playoff series against us where he kind of broke out, he hasn't done anything else since NBA career. Even this, this season, is, he's been this, disappointed. No, this, mm, I don't know. This season, he's been good. He's been better than what I expected him to be. Yeah, but we all we had low expectations for Thawmaker. They had the team. Kevin Garnett said this guy's going to be a future All Star. The Bucks had very high oh, true, expectations true. for this man. Okay, yeah. So, in our opinion, it's a one for one trade. And then the yeah, Heat, but... like, I was a little unsure about the Heat, but I guess you justified it pretty well also, given the Heat are a playoff team now. They almost had the ability to take over that third seed from yeah. Cleveland. You know, why would they get rid of their main guy? Yeah, but uh, the Heat really, really like Bam at a bio. And we saw it when we played the Miami Heat. Bam is just an absolute beast for them. So they've been kind of throwing out if Hassan Whiteside with his big contract – seeing what they could get for him. And Serge Ibaka would be a good power forward for them. Tony Snell's big contract, he's still a valuable piece. And Thaw Maker for that youth and upside. So I think it's a justified trade there. It's possible. It's un- you know, it's probably not going to happen because it's such a big deal. But this is where I love it for the Toronto Raptors. People might disagree depending on how you look at Jabari Parker's knees. But Jabari Parker... If he can stay healthy, this man is an absolute beast. Yeah. Yeah. This man, I, well, this was the guy that arguably is better than Wiggins, right? Yeah, he, you know, these, he hasn't gotten a chance to actually get a full run. And once he finally gets in a groove, he's a 20 plus point game for, per, 20 plus point per game scorer. He can shoot the three, he can defend, he can rebound. I really like Jabari Parker's game. Yeah, he'd be crazy, but he's hypothetical. He still has to come back from the injury, so he wouldn't have yeah. an immediate impact. We have to assess, really, for this season, the Toledovic and who was the other player in the trade? Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson, who's actually phenomenal as well. Um, yeah. I don't know how well Tyler Johnson would fit in, given we have a lot of guards on the team, but I, Toledovic kind of excites me, given he is a big that can shoot threes, right? We need really more shooting well. on the team. Yeah, I think that would be quite adv- advantageous in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We need stretch. Stretching the floor is the key for the Toronto Raptors right now. When we're hitting threes, we are a lot better. Tyler Johnson shoots threes as well. Jabari Parker shoots threes, and I don't know. I think this is all. This is all how you value Jabari Parker. If you do, if you look at Jabari Parker as a scrub with one knee, then you're gonna hate this deal. <laughs> you're gonna hate the you know, yeah. dislike this video, whatever. But. I think if this is a hypothet if Jabari Parker is at full health, this could be a steal for the Toronto Raptors. Buy low. Well let us know what you think. Could this even happen? If it could happen, would you want it to happen? 
Yep. I'd say that there'll be a bit of a divide whether or not you like Jabari Parker. Um, you have one special trade. One is it a banter trade? What's yeah? Well, what's the before last thing well yeah talking? before before we get into the final trade, I want to make my opinion clear. I don't think the Toronto Raptors will make a move because Masai Ujiri has said that he doesn't lo- like deadline deals mm-hmm. unless it's going to move change the ne- move the needle. Right. And I don't I don't like breaking up our our core right now, especially the, how well our bench unit has been playing, and you know. Just the chemistry is the key for the Toronto Raptors. And that's how I think we could overcome the Celtics, who just integrated Kyrie in their all, into their team, and the Cavs, who have been chemistry problems left and right. Yeah, And, you know, these trades are fun to make and fun to look at. I don't see them moving the needle for us. Fair. Fair. What are your thoughts on that record? I mean, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But I agree. I think we have a lot of faith in the bench unit. I think the biggest piece that, like, we would probably trade if we if a trade did happen would be Jonas, and mm-hmm. I love Jonas and Jonas has played so well in the last couple of games. But just benching him in the fourth or not using him to maximum efficiency or it's you been know, better to, though. It's been better it's, this month. It's been better, but I still think they hate Jonas. I, I still feel like <laughs> I still feel like in the locker room they all Yo, like, you're, he'll make you're jokes. Jonas and then, Hive to the max. I love Jonas, man. Yeah, gotta post Jonas that. Hive to the max. Got to post the Jonas hype video soon. Um, yeah. It's got to be a little more hate towards him, but uh, all right, let's hit me, hit me with that last trade. This I haven't yeah. heard about it yet, so I'm hearing it. Yeah, so time. we have our five real trades. This trade is actually impossible, but just to get Riker a bit fired up, <laughs> let's trade CJ Miles and Lucas Nagara oh. to the Orlando Magic for Terrence Ross. <laughs> Bring back T. Ross. I want T. Ross back on the roster. For people that haven't been following the podcast too much, Riker hates Terrence Ross. I love him. <laughs> I'm choking and even, even though this trade is impossible because we can't trade with the Orlando Magic, Masai Ujiri will find a way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that would be the worst thing that could ever happen. I would, I would relocate. I would have to leave the country. There's no way I could. Man, honestly, like I can't even articulate my hatred towards T. Ross. He, honestly, in my opinion, he's the worst player to ever put on a Raptors uniform and there's been some bad players that's if you mean ever. that's mean T Ross is great he's the worst he was You're a over exaggerating he was a turn no, 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 51 points and this well, is that's not... how we're ending the podcast 50 he was a turnover point. machine and we were watching a playoff game and I said to my friend listen every time he touches the ball turnover happens he's like that's not surely not true and I was like watch and as soon as he got the ball he turned it over and I was like point proven I'd, I've never been so right in my entire life he was Yo, a joke a I love me some T Ross no. Fans out there, let us know no. what you guys think of T. Ross, even though this trade is impossible. Mazai Jerry, make it happen. Bring back T. Ross for a championship run. <laughs> Anyways, right. thanks for listening. Let us know if you guys like the trades. If you guys have any other deals, let us know in the comments section. And, yeah, let's subscribe if you like the channel. Check out our other videos. And thanks for listening.